What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, James Eeks, and welcome to our third installment of the Team Compositions series. So let's get a quick review of what a team composition is. It is the central overarching strategy of a team, and learning more about team comps is going to help you in many parts of your play, such as team building, team select, and even in-game decisions. I like to say, if you can know your opponent's goal, then you can act accordingly in-game. So guys, before we start, leave a like on this video, guys. Goes a long way for real. And subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. We're almost to a 1,000 subs. Really cool. I know a lot of you guys are watching and not subbed, so drop a sub for your boy. I would appreciate that a ton. And of course, guys, check me out on Twitch where I stream five days a week. Always a great time. So without further ado, guys, let's get into our hard trick room team comp vid. The first question we need to ask ourselves is, what is Hard Trick Room, or TR as I'll be calling it in this video? And guys, Hard Trick Room is quite the infamous uh, team composition, I have to say. So as the name suggests, Hard Trick Room puts all its eggs into one basket with the goal being simple, set up Trick Room and sweep the opponent with the four turns of Trick Room that you have. So usually their team will consist of one to two Trick Room setters two to three sweepers and then one to two support pokemon that are going to be aiding in either setting up the trick room or helping those sweepers sweep and i decided i decided to do hard trick room after hyper offense because i think they are two sides of the same coin they're almost like a yin and yang dynamic the teams practically have the same game plan get into the position to sweep the enemy team and if they can't get into that position they crumble it is a high risk high reward team composition. For example, if Trick Room goes up against a hyper offense team, that Trick Room team is almost always going to win. And if a hyper offense team stops the Trick Room from going up on the other side, they are probably going to win almost every time. They are the bane of each other's existence. Now, a cool thing about Trick Room teams is that they have the luxury of getting to spend their EVs in damage and bulk as opposed to usual Pokemon that have to put their EVs into damage and speed. They hit hard and they take hits well, but for that, they have to sacrifice speed. And of course, that's where Trick Room comes in. Trick Room reversing the speed order for four turns. So since Trick Room teams rely on Trick Room so much to win games, they will do anything and everything to set up that Trick Room. Follow me, Sleep Powder, Spore, Ally Switch, Fake Out, you name it, they are going to do it to get that Trick Room up. A previous strategy used to help set up Trick Room in older gens uh, but it doesn't quite work very well anymore due to Dynamax doubling health was a suicide lead such as a Choice Scarf Final Gambit Lucario or even something like a Choice Specs Latios just trying to one shot the Pokemon that's going to stop the Trick Room from going up and then you get the Trick Room up and then hopefully that Pokemon dies or you switch it out. So that's another strategy people have historically used to help get their Trick Room up. It doesn't work quite as well with Dynamax unfortunately. But then Tools such as Weakness Policy and Dynamax have helped Trick Room teams sweep, while Dynamax on the opposing side of the field has made it harder to get Trick Room up in the first place. So there's kind of a dynamic going on. And then finally, I would say that Trick Room acquires both defensive synergy and offensive synergy in terms of your attacks and your typing. Just because if your Trick Room does fail to go up, the game is not over. You can still win as long as you have strong defensive synergy and can make those big defensive pivots and stuff like that. So I would say that that is a good rundown of hard Trick Room comps. So let's jump and do some examples. Let's start with VGC 2020's most infamous hard Trick Room composition. If you guys are playing VGC 2020, this team or something very similar to it should not come to a surprise at all. But let's break it down a little bit. So we've got two Trick Room setters in Dusclops and Hatterene. We have setup support in Follow Me, Psychic Terrain in Didi, and Sleep Powder Venusaur in some circumstances. And then we've got three to four sweepers. I would say we've got Weakness Policy Rhyperior, usually with Bulldoze Dusclops. We've got Torkoal and G-Max Hatterene. And then sometimes you can even go for a G-Max Venusaur sweep because with that Torkoal Venusaur mode, they have the option to go super fast attempt a Venusaur sweep, and then in the back have a Trick Room sweeping mode such as Dusclops and Rhyperior, or Dusclops and Hatterene, something like that. So while this team does seem one-dimensional at first, there are a few different options under the hood. This team, I believe, is so strong because of the sweepers options that they have in particular. You've got G-Max Smite and Rock Slide from Rhyperior 
the level of hacks in that, their confused, and the chance to flinch is definitely in the hard trick room team's favor. Uh, Rhyperior's weakness policy sweeps, if it decides to be the one Dynamaxing, you know, with the Bulldoze just setting up Sandstorm, getting special defense boost, doing an insane amount of damage. And then, of course, like I said, G-Max Venusaur. It's just another element that you need to be uh, prepared for. I mean, the G-Max Vine Lash is crazy strong. Uh, Venusaur does a ton of damage. Max Ooze boosting it and its partner's special attack. Everybody on the team enjoys that special attack, except Rhyperior and Duskops, so... Yeah, lots of lots of scary stuff. And then, I mean, of course, Torkoal by itself. I think Torkoal doesn't do that much damage, but the really cool thing about Torkoal is it puts on insane pressure without needing to Dynamax. You always need to respect that eruption from Torkoal, even when it doesn't have to Dynamax and it leaves the Dynamax to the partners that do it best. So just another thing that you guys need to uh, be prepared for on this team. And they do just have a lot of luck factors, like I said. This team has a lot of rolls going into it and they can really uh, take advantage of that. So I want to go into one more example of one of my favorite hard trick room teams of all time. This is Sejun Park's 2013 World Championships Top 8 team. Yes, Sejun did win the 2014 World Championships and he also top cut the 2013 World Championships. He is an absolute monster. But Anyway, take a look at this team. This team is so cool. Even for the time, it was so creative. He's got his only Trick Room setter is Jellicent, who can also do big damage with Water Spout under Trick Room. It was running a Water Gem back then. And then we've got Follow Me, Eviolite, Magmar that you could get from XD Gale of Darkness on the GameCube. And then we've got Intimidate, Fake Out, Scrafty. All Those are the two supporters to aid in setting up the Trick Room for Jellicent. And then we've got even Flying Gem Acrobatics Tornadus for that suicide super strong lead to attempt to get a quick KO and then set up Trick Room later, kind of how I talked about Latios and Lucario. And then the sweepers that we've got on the team are Thick Club Marowak with Lightning Rod. Thunderous was an absolute beast in that format. And then of course, Blizzard Obama Snow. Having weather control of your own, Blizzard's base power was higher back then and just firing off those big blizzards and hoping to get some freezes. I mean, this team was super cool. And then of course, Jellicent and Scrafty themselves, they are support Pokemon, but they can also pump out some solid damage as well. So I always thought this was such a creative hard trick room team, and it really does encompass all those things that a hard trick room needs, hard trick room team needs to succeed. So I always love looking back at it. In a similar vein to Hyper Offense, guys, if Hard Trick Room doesn't get the ball rolling, it can crumble. It is a high risk, high reward composition. First off, the most basic counter to a Hard Trick Room team is not letting the Trick Room go up in the first place, but it's easier said than done. Things like Imprison Trick Room are solid ways of stopping it, but be prepared, your opponent is going to clap back. Trick Room Imprison is very telegraphed. They know that you're gonna do that turn one. And they can just go offensive turn one, KO your Imprisoner, and then set up Trick Room later. Uh, it's got to be played very delicately to actually get your Trick Room in prison to be successful. Moves such as Dragon Tail Duraludon can force the Trick Room switcher out, but once again, it is also very telegraphed. They could just double attack Duraludon turn one. They can Dynamax and then try and kill Duraludon and then set up the Trick Room later. It's uh, Once again, you, you need to play safely against these things. These very obvious counters are... No, are very easy for the trick rumor to react to and then also Hatterene is of course immune to dragon tail so you've got to be flexible with your Duraludon when you're trying to stop trick room and then moves such as taunt are obviously very effective but once again that's easier said than done when we've got psychic terrain follow me in Didi, it's uh really tricky so i think a very well played rillaboom and incineroar can be very effective at uh stopping trick rooms uh due to Rillaboom's Grassy Surge, Incineroar's Fake Out, and both of them having access to Taunt. And then, very simply, there is go full ham and try to KO the Trick Rumor turn one. There have been some crazy strats here in VGC 2020 to get that one shot on the Trick Room setter, such as Life Orb, Max Darkness, Duraludon, next to a Choice Spec Sylveon to hit back with a Hyper Voice, going both attacks going through Follow Me. And then we've even seen Scarf, Darmanitan, Earthquake, Earthquaking a weakness policy, Duraludon, and then Duraludon killing the Trick Room Setter again. So get creative. There are ways to really knock out those Trick Roomers when they're trying, they're not gonna expect it. And um, those ones are a bit harder to pull off, but they are pretty cool. And then 
Let's talk about a less obvious yet very effective way of dealing with trick room. I like to call this getting bulky, okay? Things such as dual screens or Aurora Veil or G-Max Resonance from Lapras, Snarls, Intimidates, Coil Milotic, etc. Some teams don't need to stop the trick room. They can just prepare to weather the storm by setting themselves up. Or you can even get ready to slow down their sweep with things such as will o -Wisp, Yawn, all that kind of stuff. Well-placed Intimidates and Snarls are going to go a long way as well. So that's another way to stop. And then I think this is very important. This is something that everybody needs to know about playing against Hard Trick Room is don't let them get a free switch into their sweepers. If they are leading in DD Dust Clubs, obviously these two Pokemon do not put out a lot of damage. And if they are stuck on the field, they are wasting their Trick Room turns. So their perfect, like, Perfect plan is they click follow me with Ndidi, you kill Ndidi, they set up Trick Room and they get a free switch into Rhyperior, your Dusclops, Storkle, whoever they want to do. Like, do not let them have a free switch and try to waste their Trick Room turns. And if you think that Ndidi's switching out, throw a Will-O-Wisp into that slot. Throw a big Hydro Pump into that slot. If he's getting antsy and doesn't want to waste his Trick Room turns, he might pull the trigger and hard switch and you can punish that. So always have that in your mind. Sometimes it is best to keep Pokemon alive. Do not just try to take the free KO because sometimes it's better to leave them on the field. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Hard Trick Room is a high risk, high reward team composition that wants to get Trick Room up ASAP and sweep you in those few turns they have. They also have the luxury of being able to invest in bulk and damage since they don't need speed, but of course that gives them a heavy reliance on Trick Room. If you can stop the Trick Room from being set up, you should be in the clear if you play it correctly. Building your team to survive the Trick Room is also a viable option. Screens. Sleep, burn, intimidate, snarls. They can be enough to make them run out of their trick room steam and then you can clap back after it's done. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you guys had a good time and I hope you guys learned a little something, something. So guys, subscribe to the channel if you guys are not. I would really, really appreciate that and consider dropping by the stream, ladies and gentlemen. I'm always live. I make sure to talk and read every message in chat. I love talking and hanging out with you guys. And we're doing a little special something uh, tomorrow on Friday. So consider dropping by. But guys, I will see you guys next week for another Team Comp Guide. And I love and appreciate you. Bye, everybody.